In this video, we're turning our attention back onto VR and have a look at a VR enhancement mod or application called the NIS Scaler. The purpose of this freeware application is to improve clarity within our headsets without the cost of FPS, or alternatively, maintain your current graphics fidelity and improve FPS, or perhaps even both depending on your current system spec. We're going to do a little bit of a dive into this application so we can understand what it's doing. We'll also have a look at some head-to-head -head comparison results so we can determine whether or not this application delivers and who it's aimed at. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. If you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, you've already got the NVIDIA Image Scaler. And if you open the NVIDIA Control Panel, and then go to Manage 3D Settings, right at the top there you'll see Image Scaling, and you can turn it on or off. However, this application only applies to the desktop. Default is off, and one would normally leave it off unless you've got a good reason to switch it on, such as a low-res game or application, and you're trying to improve the clarity. But this setting doesn't help us if we're flying in VR. The application we're looking at today, the NIS Scaler, is a third-party product and not an NVIDIA product. But to some extent, it's trying to do the same thing, but in VR. I'll leave links in the notes below where you can download this program. And if at first you don't see it, click on Assets at the bottom of the page. And it's the OpenXR NIS Scaler Beta 1. Or by the time you download this, it may be Beta 2. The program is open to the community and developed by Matteo Buccaneri. Thank you, Matt, for your time and effort in developing this application. I'm not going to run through an install process. It's fairly straightforward. But Chris from Pie in the Sky Tours has already done a video on the full install. So if you're looking for more information, I'll leave links to his video in the notes below. It's a recommended watch. A few pointers to note, it's DX11 only at this time. Install to the default location, and when prompted during the install process, install for everyone. There's also a support thread linked on the page. According to the documentation that comes with this app, it can be used with any headset that uses OpenXR. Before going any further, and if you will just bear with me for a few minutes, we do need to have a basic understanding of VR resolutions and how they work. Now try and keep this straightforward and to the point. When we enable the frame counter in Microsoft Flight Simulator, in this case we're in desktop mode, we can see in the top bar the native resolution that we're using. In this case I'm in 1440p mode, it's 2560 by 1440 and here I'm in 4K at 3840 by 2160. In desktop mode, the render and display resolution is the same. However, when we look in VR, we need to read it slightly differently. And in this example, I'm using the HP Reverb. Different headsets will return different results. Here you can see it's projecting a resolution of 3148 by 3084. Hold on a minute, you may say. My reverb resolution is only 2160 by 2160. The 3148 by 3084 is the native resolution and not the display resolution. The reason the native resolution is higher is because the lenses you're looking through are not flat. They're curved like a fairly deep dish, so more pixels and a bigger image is required in order to fit across the lenses. Your system then has to correct for what is known as barrel distortion resulting in the center pixels being stretched. The bigger the image, the less those pixels are stretched, and thus the resolution is derived. The bigger the native resolution, the more pixels need to be generated, and the harder both your CPU and GPU have to work. That's why, for example, the Vajo Aero, which is using a spherical lenses or flat lenses, its render and display resolutions are much the same. It can display a high resolution and not work as hard. Staying with my example of the HP Reverb and Windows Mixed Reality, just about every VR enthusiast has played around with the render scales in Sim and within the OpenXR development tools for Windows Mixed Reality. And we've done this to get a better performance. In my case, for example, I've got a 10900K and an RTX 3090 graphics card. My in-Sim render scale is at 
100%, but my OpenXR development tool's render scale is often at 80. And when we change the render scale down from 100 to say 90 or 80 or 70, what actually are we doing? We are reducing the size of the native image. A small image means less pixels to draw, so it can be done faster. Then we rely on this smaller image with less pixels to be upscaled, to fit into the headset. Just as an example, here's a high-res picture, and we can zoom in and maintain a level of graphics fidelity. Here's the same picture at lower resolution, and when we zoom in, we lose some of the detail and clarity, because it's at a lower resolution. So we can gain a performance improvement by reducing the size or resolution of the native image. But depending on how much you have to reduce that resolution by, the penalty is clarity, as the system is having to upscale that image to fit the headset. On screen are a few examples of the OpenXR render resolution at different percentages. The lower the native image, the more upscaling is required. And it's here where the NIS scaler can come in to assist. Just to note that on screen is the test flight that I did for all the results that I'll be showing at the end of this video. To arrive at the average frame rates, I used the game mode frame counter and not the in sim frame counter. I'm not sure about the accuracy of this frame counter, but as it was used on all tests and all tests were done with the reverb, the results I believe are valid. The NIS scaler works on a very similar manner to the default, but it is far more efficient and therefore less heavy on the system. It can process quicker. And in addition to that, it's got a sharpening option for the image that can help improve clarity, even if your native resolution is quite a way down. The upscaling algorithm is far more advanced and yields better results. So what's the practical application of this? Well, if you are running OpenXR at 80% and 100% in SIM, you can run the NIS scaler at 80% and achieve more FPS. Alternatively, you can choose to keep the FPS the same by turning up some settings to improve the overall experience. The choice is up to you. On our test flight, we've now departed Meg's Field and we're just turning to go overhead downtown Chicago. But before we do so, let's have a quick look at the NIS application. When the application starts, you'll be presented with a view that looks like this. Please note that your OpenXR render scale should be set at 100%, and it's strongly recommended your in-sim resolution is set the same. Use of the software is not restricted just to their HP reverb, nor NVIDIA cards. Again, details from the link below. Currently, development is focused towards Microsoft Flight Simulator, and there is a preset, and you can enable or disable NIS scaling simply by checking and unchecking the box. Once checked, you can then move the various sliders. The top one is your resolution, and the bottom one, as indicated, is your sharpness to assist with clarity. But note, moving the sharpness way up does have a hit on frame rates, and can also give an appearance of things being fairly grainy. For sharpness, I found about 30% ideal for me. There are options to adjust and check the sharpness in flight, but if you change the scale, well, you need to restart your VR app. If you try it and you don't like it and want to uninstall it, well then, just start your install app again and it'll give you an option to fully uninstall. Depending on your system, of course, it's going to be a matter of trial and error. Try a setting, see if it's an improvement. If not, make the necessary adjustments and so on. There's such a diversity of systems, there's not a setting that I can give you which is perfect. I have a powerful system and arguably the benefits to me are the least or the smallest. I've settled on a sharpness of about 30% and an NIS scalar resolution at 90%. Steve, VR Flight Sim Guy, has shared his settings with us and I see he's using something around 25%. So we're pretty much in agreement here. Check out his settings video. Once again, I'll leave links in the notes below. Compared to the 80% I had in the OpenXR development tool app, the clarity of my image has improved, not by a massive amount, but it's certainly better. The biggest beneficiaries of using an app like this are going to be those with low to medium PCs. This application has the promise of raising performance levels and making for a much more enjoyable VR experience. 
Please note that the test results that we'll look at now are on my system. You should also note that whilst using this app, I did notice an increase in the amount of shimmer that I experienced. And that may be a factor you need to build in. I think it's also important that you recognize that the render scale in the OpenXR development tool and in the NIS scaler are not the same. The NIS scaler reduces the image more than the OpenXR app does, as shown above. However, because of the way that it upscales and the ability to sharpen the image somewhat, and although the base resolution was lower, I found the images comparable. And now let's have a look at the test results. During the same flight, in my first test, I compared OpenXR render scale at 100% to NIS scaler at also 100%, and I saw very little difference. Both scored exactly the same using the game mode FPS counter at 31 frames. Clarity with NIS enabled was marginally better. For my second test, I tested both with OpenXR at 80% and then the NIS Scalar at 80%. Note the NIS 80% is at a lower resolution than the OpenXR is at 80%. But with my sharpness set at 30%, I could see things far more clearly and pick out more detail. The overall image, well, it looked better than the OpenXR one. For my final test, I decided to compare the OpenXR set at 80% to the NIS scaler at 90% and see what the difference was. 90% was giving me a better image overall, and my FPS counter recorded 35 frames per second, allowing for the vagrancies in my flight and margin for error, one can say they're pretty much the same. The next iteration of the NIS Scaler is due to be released soon, or as mentioned earlier, may already be out in the marketplace. It's beta 2, and it will add some interesting and useful features, which will include a very useful FPS counter performance overlay. Interestingly, it says there add will scale override, and it also says to add support for AMD's FSR. The NIS Scalar application is not perfect, and I found turning down the sharpness somewhat reduces the amount of shimmer that you experience. But what a clever tool it is, and it holds great potential for the future. If, for example, you compare my 80% tests, then without any loss of visual fidelity to all intents and purposes, I gained a 14% increase in frames per second. I suspect that those users with older graphics cards with limited memory will gain the most benefit from this application, and some have reported up to 10 or 15 FPS improvement. I didn't experience that or get anywhere near it, but then again I do have a strong system with a 3090. If you're into VR, well it's worth a look. Thank you very much for being with me today, I hope you found this interesting and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.